Good afternoon all. I think it's time to look again at the Vocoder project. This uh, 1980s piece of musical effects equipment which I've started but I haven't really made a huge amount of progress. All I've built so far are a couple of square wave oscillators with uh, variable frequency and variable mark space ratio. There's a lot more to do. So today I want to start looking at this, which is the real essence of the vocoder. It's the filtering sections. Um, this is the analysis filter section and this is the synthesis filter section. Uh, generally speaking, you'd put a microphone into the analysis filter and something like a synthesizer into the synthesis uh, filter. Now these two filters are actually identical. This is a bandpass filter. This is a bandpass filter and they're tuned to exactly the same frequency and there are 14 of these whole circuits all stacked side by side. So what does the vocoder actually do? Well it splits the uh, speech input into these 14 different frequency bands and then all it actually does here is it just measures the amount of signal there is in each of these 14 bands. In fact, if you put a little VU meter here, like an LED bar graph, you could uh, think of this as a spectrum analyzer. You've got 14 frequency bands and you're simply measuring the volume units in each of these 14 frequency bands. Then when you put your synthesizer into this bandpass filter, you can think of this as a graphic equalizer. So again, you've got 14 bands and you've got a variable volume control so that you can change the level of each of these 14 frequency bands. The thing about the vocoder is that it uses the volume level that it measures here on the microphone to control the volume level that's fed through here from the other source. So you're doing a spectral analysis of the speech input and using it to control the frequency spectrum of the music input. That's in essence what the vocoder is doing. So all I want to do today is just build one of these little uh, bandpass filters. So it's simply a dual op amp, some resistors and some capacitors. Uh, here's my dual op amp on a breadboard already, just got to get the resistors and capacitors. And I just want to sort of put music in to this bandpass filter and then listen to what comes out and it should be the same music but sort of narrowed down into this very narrow band of frequencies and in fact from the same magazine article here are the frequency bands um, now the 14 bands uh, the 1 and 14 are slightly different because 1 is a low pass filter 14 is a high pass filter but all the ones in between are band pass filters and I thought I'd go for number 7 it's the one they've drawn in full here so it's a fairly narrow band of frequencies centered around one kilohertz so it should sound a bit sort of oh, 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 that sort of uh, kind of thing just just a very narrow band of frequencies uh, that's just a guess that sounded a bit like a monkey but uh, it'd be interesting to see what this sounds like now all the component values uh, marked on this uh, bandpass filter are just asterisks because they're different for each of the 14 uh, frequency channels and they provide a table here of all the component values and as you can see they're just different for each uh, channel so I'm going to pick channel 7 uh, so we've got like a 1k pot, 6k2 resistor, 180k resistor and so on and then there are some capacitor values up here and uh, actually different uh, integrated circuits for the different channels for some strange reason they're using bipolar op amps for these channels but there are three here where they've gone for FET op amps not quite sure why that is. Right, so let's start with the capacitors. Um, band 7, I need four 15 ends, another four, and another one. So I need nine 15 n capacitors. Hmm, let's see if I've got any. Right, I found some 15 nanofarad uh, polyester capacitors. Let's just have a look at the marking on those. And uh, yeah, those say 153, so that's 15 N. So yeah, I've got those, that's good. 
Right, resistors, uh, we need uh, this row, a couple of 12Ks, 2K4, 220K, uh, four of those, 560 ohms, and so on. So uh, I'm going to try and dig all of those out of these resistor packs, which I bought from Rapid Electronics. Let's get all those done. And uh, some of the resistors I had to buy separately as 100 pack strips. So, for example, the 6K2... Uh, is this one so that wasn't in the original kit but I do have those good right I'm just going to stop there for a moment and open this because I've got a feeling it's relevant to this project hmm I don't seem to have a knife so I have to try and find one of those so I'm just ripping this at the moment but uh, yeah this is what I thought it was it's lots more of these plastic boxes um, which are perfect size for putting resistors in, so i uh, got quite a few of them now. And uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. I've snapped them all together, and uh, I think I've got a block of 30 of these now. Already done the 11Ks, just got all the others to do. And uh, these just uh, flip up when you pull the little levers, so you can get to the resistors inside. They're, uh, they're rather good. Now, it says on this chart that the uh, dual op amp should be either a 1458 or, in some cases, it's a TL082 LF353JFET uh, input op amp, the 1458 standard bipolar. Now, I've got a 4558 because it was all I could get at the time, although I've noticed that um, Alice and other sellers like her are selling the 1458 now, so I might get some 1458 so that I can be absolutely true to the original circuit but yeah 4558 will be fine for today now i've noticed that this original vocoda article does have quite a lot of errors in it uh, missing components certainly missing pin numbers for the op amps so i need to write those in if i'm going to stand any chance of breadboarding it now so uh, i need to get a pin out for the uh, 4558 is the same as the 1458, it's the same as the TL082 actually, and uh, mark on here what the pin numbers are so that I can start putting these components in. And I'm actually now marking on all the component values for this band 7 uh, filter. So R4 is a 560R, uh, R6 is uh, 220k r5 up there is 220k um, I can't imagine r7 is terribly important it just seems to affect the gain in the precision rectifier stage I'm not quite sure how important r1 is uh, I assume it is important and that it's been set for a sort of zero impedance input but I'm going to be shoving in just something from my PC there so I can play some music so I'm not entirely sure how that'll affect the frequency but uh, just for the moment it'll be fine this will uh, this will work as a bandpass filter right let's start placing components um, so if we start here with C1 we've got an input node there capacitor to C uh, to pin 2 so let's put my input node uh, there capacitor to pin 2 and to some extent, I'm kind of pre-planning how I'm going to lay this thing out on the proto board, one of those green matrix boards uh, that I'm using for this project. So uh, I'm just trying to get an idea of how compact I can make this uh, filter because there's a lot of stuff to pack onto that board uh, when I come to build the uh, well the final prototype. Right, well, it's kind of built. Um, it needs lots of flying leads. It needs flying leads for plus 12 volts, minus 12 volts, ground, uh, input and output. So let's get all those on and then rig up some input and output uh, audio systems and some power. It's going to be a bit of a mess. Right, chip pin 8 is plus 12 volts, uh, pin 4 is minus 12 volts black green can be ground uh, that's my ground point there then I need uh, an input which I'll make yellow that can go there and blue can be output which comes off pin 7 I think it is yes there pin 7 
Uh, so that will be the low impedance output. Now whether that will need a capacitor into my audio system, I don't know. Uh, right, using lots of uh, nickel metal hydride batteries for power. So green ground goes to those two centre pins. Uh, then I've got to put plus 12 volts on and uh, hope I've got this right so it doesn't go bang. So plus 12 volts goes there. Uh, minus 12 volts goes there. These are about 10 volts actually, but that's good enough. Okay, so just input and output. Right, this is audio coming from my PC. Now I can never quite remember uh, which is which, so I'm going to go for the inner one and the tip to be ground and signal. So they can go to my yellow and green inputs. Right, I'm just going to play some music through it, but if you're wearing headphones, beware, it's very shrill and it's very loud. Yeah, that's too shrill and too loud, so I think what I'll do is stick a 47k resistor on there. Uh, I'll need a crop clip just to hold that. Actually, no, I can just hold that myself. I will get a crop clip. Right, so this song is called If I Had a Chicken. And I mean, you can hear it's incredibly shrill. And uh, there's definitely a frequency that's very resonant there. I'll just connect it to the input rather than the output. Let's do that now. Let's hook it across from that output. Uh, to the input, which is, hmm, what is it, yellow? Is that going to make a horrible noise? Let's try that. If I had a chicken. It's a bit loud. That's all centered around that frequency anyway, so let's try something a bit different. that off the input and put it on the output. So I think you can see that that bandpass filter is definitely working, filtering out pretty much all frequencies other than this one kilohertz. It sounds pretty awful. Let's try another piece. Right, here's one called Easy Day which sounds quite pleasant. So that's connected to the input. Let's hook that over on the output. That's quite a quiet piece. Let's do that without the resistor. So yeah. Oh, that's a bit harsh. That must be something centered on the one kilohertz bandpass frequency and it's allowing that straight through without attenuation, but of course it's attenuating everything higher than one kilohertz and lower than one kilohertz. So yeah, I think that works. Let's go back to the input again. And we get the full range of frequencies. Interesting. Now what does this pot do? Let's give it a try. Yeah, I think you can hear that it's just slightly tweaking. I'm not sure whether it tweaks both stages or just one. Presumably just one. It does seem to send it into oscillation at the top end. But yeah, that's to uh, tune the filter. This is another piece. Let's see what this sounds like normally. Quite screechy, really. I think I'll stick to the uh, one kilohertz filtered. Uh, so yeah, that's what one of these bandpass filters sounds like. Um, it's all a bit uh, of a mess here. I could do with some proper audio connectors uh, that sort of connect into breadboard. 
I might uh, order some of those. And I've got no volume control on this speaker, so it's all a bit hit and miss what the volume level is, but I think you've got the impression of uh, what this thing's actually doing. So now it's just a case of uh, plowing on, building some more of uh, these different frequency bandpass filters, building the high and the low pass filters for channels 1 and 14, and then building identical copies uh, for the synthesis section. Well, I'm building everything else, really. So I uh, better have a bit of a tidy up now. These things always seem to create an enormous mess on my desk. Um, if you did enjoy that video, uh, despite the rather shrill sounds, why not today share it? Uh, there's a share button down here. If you share it via your social media, that would be enormously helpful. And uh, of course, there are some more videos here to watch and the subscribe button. And uh, please thumbs up if you like the video. Cheerio.